Now let's learn how to use events with our nested artboards. Like our other examples, we have our parent artboard and a child artboard that we've nested inside of it. If we go to our child artboard, you'll see that it's a play button. And when we play the state machine, we can click on the button and it flashes. Now let's go ahead and remove this background so that all we can see is the button. Up to this point, we've seen how to manipulate the inputs of a child artboard using the parent artboard. But now we're gonna do it the other way around. In this case, we're gonna use events to change the inputs on the parent artboard. So the first thing we need to do is create an event. Now we can either use the shortcut, which is shift E, or we can go up here and select the event tool. Now we can click somewhere on the stage, preferably near our button, and that will create our event. Now let's go ahead and rename this event from event to click event. Now we're gonna use this event to notify our parent artboard that something's happened with the child artboard. In this case, we want to report the event whenever we click on the button. So we'll need a listener and on pointer down, we want to make sure that instead of changing an input, we want to fire an event. Now that we've got that selected, we need to make sure that we have the right event reporting. In this case, we want to select click event. Now, once we start our state machine, we can go up and click on our button, and not only does our animation play, but you'll notice that the event is firing. So now we have a button that both flashes on and off and reports a click event. Now let's go back to our parent artboard. Now if we want the parent artboard to know that some event has happened, how are we gonna do that? Well, we'll need to listen for it. And to do that, we'll need to select our child artboard, and then create a listener. Now that's automatically gonna target our nested artboard. And in the listener actions, you can see that we can now listen for that event. Now when that event fires, we can do a number of things. And for example, we could modify an input. So let's go ahead and create an input for the parent artboard. In this case, it's gonna be a Boolean. We're gonna rename it and call it parent Boolean just so we know what it is. Now we can go back to our listener and go ahead and change the input when our event fires. So we can grab that and it can be true, false, or we can just toggle it. Now let's play our state machine and test it out. So when we click on our button, you can see that now our Boolean is true. And when we click on it again, it toggles to false and it goes back and forth every time we click on the button. So how's all this working? Well, if we go back to our button, you'll remember that every time we click on our button, this click event goes off. Our parent artboard is listening for that click event that's coming from our child artboard. And every time that event goes off, we're toggling our uh, parent Boolean. So while our child can't directly control our parent artboard, we can get around that by using events and listening for those events. And when those events happen, then we can change the inputs of a parent artboard. Now, the interesting thing with this is that we can listen for different events and have different events control different inputs. So we're gonna go in and add a couple new inputs and um, experiment with that. So let's add in a new Boolean and call this one parent Boolean two. And then we can go in and um, duplicate our uh, nested artboard and use that second nested artboard to control this input. So we'll duplicate this button and uh, move it down. And let's make sure that we rename this button in the hierarchy so that it's a little bit easier to find. And we'll call it child artboard two. And now we need to repeat the steps that we did before. We need to listen for the event so we'll select our uh, new button, create a new listener that automatically sets the target. And then instead of a pointer down, we wanna listen for an event and that's that um, click event. And then when that click event goes off, we'll change our Boolean one, we'll grab Boolean two, and then we'll set it to toggle as well. 
Now let's go back and test this and check out our different Booleans. So when we click on the first button, our first Boolean changes. And when we click on the second button, that Boolean changes as well. As you can see, this has allowed us to take one button and create multiple functions using events and listeners.